How many people think they're doing something in love and is actually not being love, it's been selfish? Can I tell you something? There are many times where I thought I was working in love and really it wasn't love at all, it was self. Because the nature of the old heart is deception, but the nature of the new heart is truth and love. This is a month of love and if you're going to experience God's love, okay, it starts from the heart. It starts from the heart and the state of your heart is so important and I'm grateful to God that God gave us a new heart and we have to operate in that new heart every day and we have to protect it. Um, I want to ask you guys a question really quickly and, and, I, and I asked this at the young adults on Friday and, 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 I, and I always love this, but how many of you have ever heard the phrase, God knows my heart? How many of you, you, you know that one? Yeah, let me see your hand up. How many of you have ever used that phrase? Put your hand up. Yeah, God knows my heart, right? Have you ever done that, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. And, and the thing is, is, you know, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And many times people actually don't understand where that statement is coming from. And, and I, and I want to show you guys the scripture for that. And then we're going to get into, I, I want to show you what is, this is such a powerful step. If you are going to walk out the love of God this month, you have to know how to maintain your heart. Okay. And so I want, I just want to show you this really quick. Go to Luke 16 verse 15, I believe. You know, you, you need to keep yourself in love. Jude, when he was talking to the church, he said, keep yourself in love. You know what that tells me? It tells me that people can move in and out of love. God's love is unchanging. God's love is unfailing. But whether we're flowing in it, operating in it, really comes down to what are you and I doing? Ask your neighbor, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, come on. Only, only Ernest and Lori were saying anything. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, what are you doing? <laughs> Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. So this is Jesus talking to the Pharisees. So anytime you've ever said, God knows my heart, I want you to see the context of that declaration. Most times there's a lot of things that go around in the body of Christ that are like not really true. Like you'll, you'll like, they're not a scripture, but people will tell them like they'll speak them like they're scriptures. Like God gives his hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. I'm like, what scripture is that? Tell me the scripture where that, that's, there's no scripture that says that. Okay. What God does say is that with every challenge, you will not be tempted beyond what you can bear. And that God will provide a way of escape for you. Amen. But sometimes people think that they're facing hard challenges because God is testing them. And it might not be a test. It might just be, he was foolish or is the devil. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you have to understand the word. And so I want you to see this. He says, and he said unto them, this is Jesus talking to the Pharisees. So talking to the religious leaders, the pastors, the preachers, the prophets, the evangelists, all those people of, of his time. And he said unto them, you are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So you know what he was telling them? He's like, God knows your hearts, how off they are. <laughs> and most times when people are using that scripture, they're trying to justify themselves before themselves or before men say, well, God knows my heart. That's why I'm doing it. And the thing is, is you're deceiving yourself. And this is why it's so important you have to maintain and keep this new heart. Because the nature of the old heart is deceptive. How many people think they're doing something in love and is actually not being love, it's been selfish? Can I tell you something? There are many times where I thought I was working in love and really it wasn't love at all, it was self. Because the nature of the old heart is deception, but the nature of the new heart is truth and love. And God gave us a new heart and said, you protect it, you nurture it, you grow it, amen? Quickly, really quickly, Jude one twenty. let me just show you that. It says, keep yourselves in love. And if you want to keep yourselves in love, what do you have to keep? Your heart. Because you cannot experience God's love without the heart. Love is never a mental thing. 
If love is, you know who, or let me say, you know what type of people operate love as a mental thing? Psychopaths and narcissists. Because it's only up here and has no tangible from here. So love doesn't operate from the mind, it operates from the heart. 121, he, sa he says, keep yourselves in love. 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So you know what that means? He's giving a charge. He's saying that if you want to operate this love, you have a role to play. You have to keep yourself in it. And how do you do that? What are you actually keeping to walk in love? The answer is your heart. Say, my heart. Say, my heart. I got to keep my heart. Because you know what the thing is, is when the heart gets darkened, when the heart is poisoned, when the heart is bitter, it becomes so hard to receive love. And I want to tell you something. You cannot operate God's love without receiving it first. He's put it in your spirit. He's released it to you. But I like to think of it like a flow. There's a flow that comes from him that, that you... When your heart is clean, it's like you're open and there's just a constant flow coming through you. And so I want to show you how to do that today because I think this thing is so, 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 so important. And, it, and because it's so simple and because it's so basic, it's very easy to overlook. But one of the best ways that you can maintain your heart is meditation. Say meditation. Because... The world is going to always try and deposit something into you. The devil is always going to be trying to deposit something into you. Your environment, your circumstances, your experiences are always trying to deposit something into you. You, you know, a couple years ago, we had a bunch of weeds in the, back, in, in the backyard. And if I wanted to kill those weeds, if I wanted to get rid of the weeds, if I wanted to grow them, you know, what, you know what I was doing? I was pouring bleach on the weeds. So the bleach will kill the weeds. But how many of you know that if I put enough bleach in the ground, it won't just kill the weeds, it'll kill the soil? And so you have to understand your heart is like a soil and if there's enough bleach put on it, the soil becomes poisoned. It becomes damaged. And this is why God wants us constantly uh, washing ourselves. So really quickly, go to Ephesians chapter 5 and uh, verse 26, I believe. Ephesians 5, 26. I want to show you your, your meditation life in God's word. And I'm not talking about reading your Bible. I'm not even talking about because there's also fellowship with the spirit of God. You know, fellowship in the word. But I want to specifically talk to you today about meditation in the word, which is a type of fellowship. But it goes, it, it goes beyond that. There's something that takes place when you meditate. Because, listen, if you don't clean yourself off, at some point you're going to stink. Let me say that again. If you don't wash consistently, you will begin to stink. And so we also wash our hearts. So look at this. Ephesians 5.26. Talking about the church of God. Paul was talking to the Ephesians and he says, Christ gave himself for the church that he might what? Sanctify and cleanse it. Sanctify and cleanse it. So one of the goals, one of the purposes that God has for the church is to what? Sanctify and cleanse it. I'll tell you something. You're not here by mistake today. If you're in this church, it's because God is calling you to be a leader. God is calling you to a level of training that most people don't know or don't understand. I'll tell you, I, I, I've told you guys many times, I, have I was literally born in church, yet there's many things I've learned here that th I did not learn out there and that I didn't even learn even in school. There, I talk to pastors and there are some times when I'm hearing them, I'm like, don't you know this thing? So you are called to this house. Why? Because God is calling you to a high level of sonship. 
Somebody say a bigger amen. amen. To a high level of discipleship. And you have to learn these things. So he said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. By what? By what? <laughs> if Mal was here, he'd be laughing right now because my voice is just kind of like, by what? <laughs> <laughs> by the washing of water. By the word. So if you want to wash, what do you need? Word. You need the word. If you want to wash, you need the word. Tell your neighbor, have you bathed recently? <laughs> We're talking about meditation here. Man, don't, don't, don't be going checking, you know what I mean? Although you should always keep a spare little deodorant on you, you know, you never know. <laughs> but you wash by the word. You wash by the word. And your washing is daily. Your washing is daily. The thing is, is when the heart gets dirty, when the heart gets clogged. Let me give you another example. How many of you, <laughs> there was something my wife always says. She's like, we never had an issue with the drains until a man moved into the house. Because when I shave the beard, eventually what happens is if I'm shaving and, I, and so I try and get it all out of the sink. But eventually the hair from the beard, what does it do to the sink? It clogs it. It doesn't happen right away, but if it's not maintained, if, if I am not making sure to clean out the drain, at some point a clog will form and the flow stops. You have to understand there are some things that choke up the heart and this is why you must wash continually so your new heart is maintained. You know why I love new cars? You know why I love new cars? Or even, or even like new pre-owned cars. You know why I love them? Because when you get into them, they have that new car smell. You know, I've been looking to find like one of those uh, air fresheners, new car smell. Why? Because when you get in, it's just so clean. You know what I mean? But I have kids. I have kids and I love clean cars. And if it's not maintained, you very quickly find fries in the seats, um, pop stain on, on the window, on, on, on the thing, right? So even though I enjoy a new car, if it's not maintained, it quickly changes. What meditation does for you is meditation is the washing of water by the word for your heart. It's the cleansing and purging of the heart so there's no build up and love gets choked out. There are things in life that choke out love. Right? When you're talking about the uh, four kinds of soil, the four kinds of heart, in the third one, it talks about the pressures of the world choking out seed. So there are things that get choked in the heart. There are, there are things that fill the heart. The Bible, the, the Bible, um, Peter said to Ananias and Sapphira, why did Satan, why did you allow him to fill your heart with lies? So hearts can be filled, hearts can be choked. How many of you know that some people's hearts, they're just filled with fear? Let me show you a scripture really quickly. Isaiah 33, uh, verse 7, I believe. 18, 18. Their heart becomes filled with fear because of what they're meditating on. So you determine what is flowing in and out of the heart. Look at this. He says, your heart shall meditate terror. That's not your portion in Jesus name. But some people, they can't receive love. Why? They can't receive God's love because all they're thinking about is that betrayal. All they're thinking about is, uh, I, I was let down. I was disappointed. I was hurt. I'm afraid. If I trust God this time, what's going to happen? You are meditating on fear. And even though you've received a new heart, you know what that new heart does? It makes it very hard for these things to grow. But you still have to maintain it. And so they meditate on, on fear. Where's the scribe? Where's the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? The reason Israel didn't enter into the promise for a generation is because 10 spies meditated more on fear than on God. And the two that entered in is they meditated more on the Lord than what they were facing. Your meditation life matters. Say my meditation life matters. 
So how can how can you do that? I, I just want to encourage you in some things. I'm going to take two minutes and then I'm going to round up. I want to encourage you. Get a scripture. You know, Papa was talking about focus today. I don't... <laughs> Papa, I appreciate your mind. You know, he was it Matthew 6 or whatever one that you memorize when you're going to talk to, to mama, right? Like he just memorized the whole chapter and it's like, wow, <laughs> you, you, you know, that, that, that's great. If you're meditating, I don't need you to memorize a chapter, okay? So don't, <laughs> don't follow that specific example of memorizing the whole chapter. Just pick a scripture. Pick a verse. Ask the Lord, Lord, give me a verse and just sit on it. I mean, sit on it. Sit on it. Because there is enough power in one scripture to transform you. Okay? And, and so there are things that are, you are facing in life that they're going to pollute the heart, damage the heart, fill the heart with fear. You have to be flushing them out. When you sit down to meditate on that scripture God gave you, what you're doing is you're flushing that thing out. You're flushing it out. You're keeping your heart fresh. You're washing so that love can flow. Yeah. You will never know God's love if you don't know his word. Because he revealed his love to you in his word. He said Jesus was manifested to reveal the love of God to you. And Jesus is the word. So you have to sit down. I notice I didn't say the Bible. There's the written scripture. But the word is your eating of the scripture. So you have to sit down with it. You come. You sit down. You sit down. Lord, thank you. You were wounded for me. You were bruised for me. So you sit down on the scripture. And, and just close your eyes. It helps you to, to focus. Right? So we're not distracted. Because how many, how many of you know one of the best times to be distracted is in, or not the best time, but one of the times you are most distracted is when? When you're meditating in the Word. Yeah. It, it, it just, I can't tell you how active and how good my memory becomes when it's time to meditate. I'm like, half the time I don't even remember what day it is, but I sit down to meditate and all of a sudden I'm remembering things from three weeks ago and I had to do this and this bill. I'm like, where is this coming from? Yeah, grocery store, everything. Now, and, and then what happens from there from, from remembering is what? Now you begin planning out all the things you got to do. And next, and next thing you know, you can't even remember a scripture you were sitting down with. It's a distraction from your cleansing. Because you need your heart to be in a good place. Yeah. You want to hear God? You need your heart clean. Do you know that, that doing... Doing things right is a function of the heart. Yeah. You need your heart in a good place. You want to know that love. You need your heart in a good place. So what do you do? You meditate on the scripture. You sit down. Lord, thank you. It says in your word in 1 John 4, 19. You loved me so I can love you. Lord, you love me so I can love you. Lord, what does that mean? What does your love look like? You love me so that I can love you. You love me. And then your, listen, let your study be birthed out of your meditation. Yeah, hear me. Let your study be birthed out of your meditation. That when you're there and God gave you a scripture and you're, and you're sitting and you're meditating on it. And then you begin to ask, Lord, okay, you, you love me so that I can love you. What does your love look like? And then you begin to study and see what that love looks like. And then you sit down and you meditate. And then you have more questions. Lord, how can you love me like this? And then you study some more. And then you meditate some more. And what begins to happen is that word begins to flow over you. And begins to transform your heart. Take over your heart. It purges out. Because I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. It, it is... It is hard to receive when you have preconceived ideas of God, of people, of whatever. If I come to Ernest today and say, Ernest, you're looking great today. Your chain is beautiful. It's nice. And he thinks I just want money from him. He's going to be like, oh, so is he calculating the cost of my chain? But if he knows that I love him and I say, you're looking great. You're looking beautiful. But he'll, 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 he, can, he can receive it. He can say thank you. So if you believe something about me, that's bad. You can't never receive from me. Whether as a pastor or of God. 
And many people don't know they're holding things against God. Why? Because when you thought something should go a certain way and it didn't, you felt like God let you down. Like He disappointed you and He failed you. God doesn't fail. God doesn't fail. So I want to encourage you, you have to be in the Word because if you want to know this love, the state of your heart matters. Rise up to your feet. Let's pray this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Amen. Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Before I pray for you, if you don't yet know Jesus or you want to commit your life afresh to Jesus, just say this prayer after me, whether you're online or here in the sanctuary. Just say, Jesus, Jesus. I believe you loved me I enough to come and die for me. I believe you died and you were buried and you rose again for me. Today I receive your love into my heart. I believe you died for me and I receive you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. If that prayer, if you pray that prayer and you're here today, come see me after the service. If you're online, write to us. We want to connect with you. Just lift your hands right now and say, Lord, Lord I want to know this law. I want to experience this law. Lord, help me. To meditate in your word, to wash daily with your word. Lord, I receive grace today. I receive grace today to know how to meditate, to know how to wash in your word. Father, if there's any ideas that I have about you hindering me from receiving from you, from receiving your love, Lord, purge them out of me. Lord, take them out of me. Send me your word. Lord, I ask right now for a word to meditate on from today. Lord, speak to me now. Send me a word in the name of Jesus. Just talk to him right now. You can pray in tongues if you pray in tongues. Let the word come to you. Let the word come to you. The word of his love. The word of his salvation. The word of his deliverance. That word that you need for the situation you're in right now. Let it come to you. Let it come to you. Let it come to you. Alongside that word, let grace come. I say, let grace come. Amen. I say, let grace flow. You will not drop the word. You will not fall away from the word. You will not despise the word. And I pray for you today that if your heart has been meditating on terror, by this word coming, let that hold of terror and of fear lose their hold, lose their grip, lose their grip in Jesus' name. Can we clap for Jesus? Amen. Just thank God right now as we get ready to take our communion. If you need healing in your body, I pray for you today that the love of God touch you today, minister to you, and heal you in Jesus' name.